Hello and welcome to Avenging Pass 7. Today is day 145 of our free-to-play farming guide. If you have not already, please subscribe, hit that like button, and the notification bell. And please go check out our Discord as well as our merch store. Down below, I had someone uh, who bought the uh, Avenging Pass 7 desk pad uh, reach out to me. Uh, yesterday, after I had recorded the video, <clears throat> they said they loved it. They said it was a lot bigger than they had expected it to be. It kind of covered their whole desk, gave... Uh, you could easily read uh, the name of Edging Pass 7 um, beneath the keyboard or above the keyboard while the keyboard was on it as well as the mouse. And I think it also, ended, a corner, ended up going underneath their keyboard and their monitor stand. It, it's a big desk pad, so please go check that out. But, you know, I got hoodies, uh, hats, shirts. Um, I have some of the older iPhone cases, iPhone 11 X and maybe 9, I think, are what it's on there. Um, as well as the desk pad, so please go check it out. Um, see if there's anything over there you'd like. Now, before we do anything else, I do want to remind you. Read the pop-ups on your game if you have not already. There is a pop-up for some free Calcasta shards. Make sure you grab that. It can give you 1 to 330 shards. So, take that chance. Um, I believe um, after talking with my guild, most people are getting between 7 and 10 shards. Um, I haven't seen anybody get, I think, uh, someone, I think, got t yeah, 10 shards, I think, is the highest I've seen so far. So, please, take that chance. Don't forget to grab that. Um, if you did not already, um, I did see somebody say something about how they skipped it and was able to get back over to it. Um, let me see. If I can find it. Um, clearing data on a different device and going in to get it to pop up for me earlier after I closed it out on my phone when I woke up this morning. It might work on your main device, but he couldn't test it right now. So you might have to, tr you know, try just a couple things. Um, but there should be a way to get back to it if you did skip it, skip on it. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about, I believe was the comments. I think we had, like, a lot of comments. Um, Matt B is, uh, he's one of my favorite viewers. Um, he comments quite often uh, when he gets the chance or when there's something engaging for him to talk, to comment on. Um, but he gets backlogged on the videos, and then he goes through, he still goes through them in order, he doesn't skip a day. Um, he's back on day 115 right now, and so Matt B, when you catch up to this, I'm seeing your comments, thank you for, uh, commenting and supporting the channel. Um, he commented to say it's great to see the growth of the channel and to keep up the good work, so thank you for that. I love the channel, I love the community, and I love doing all this, um... It's been a lot of fun. It really has been a lot of fun. Uh, Matt B has a fun topic for that I, I do. I don't remember what I talked about in day 114, um, but he brought up that there's been very few movie series in which a series in which a sequel is just as good as the first movie. John Wick Chapter Two was just as good as the first, but the third chapter in my mind missed the mark. But then you look at the Marvel Universe. <clears throat> Any, many, and many of those sequels were just meh. They were clearly just to move the overall storyline. First, I want to say I need to rewatch all three John Wick movies. All three of them, I think, hit my top three movies at this point. I love the John Wick trilogy so far. And I'm super excited about the fourth one coming out in just a few weeks now. John Wick blew my mind um, with how good the movies were. And then, you know, I think I watched the first movie before the second one had come out. My brother had suggested it to me um, and that he wanted to go see the sequel with me. And so he told me to go watch the first one. I was off at college at the time. So I watched the first one. I was blown away. And I went online and I started watching all these behind the scenes um, videos of the making of the movie. And I was blown away that... They did so many of their... The actors did so many of their own stunts. They still had stuntmen for certain things. But they did... So
so many of their own stunts. I was blown away. And, and simply because of that fact, it made me like the movies so much more than I already did. Um, that John Wick, or that Keanu Reeves spent three months practicing the fighting techniques and the taekwondo, I don't, don't want to say taekwondo, but the fighting techniques, the gun techniques, shooting real guns, going out to um, Terran Tactical out in um, California and doing all these trainings so he could do majority of his own stunts except for the very specific few that he couldn't. I love that idea. I love that fact because, I mean, you don't hear about that today. Nobody does their own stunts. Very few people are willing to do their own stunts outside of maybe some wire work or some certain things. It just doesn't happen. Um, now, I loved the third one. Um, I really did. I loved the third one just as much as the others. I think they're all on the same level. I think the first one is still my favorite just because it is such a good con this it's such a good story it's very compact it is what it is it happens and like i get excited just thinking I, i'm getting excited just thinking about it um but i did love the third one um game and aslak commented yesterday asking if i had had any sales on my merch i replied to him um and i kind i had mentioned that earlier in the video as well about how i did um, a zombie 69 uh, commented, just found your channel. Looks like you have a lot of catching up to do. A zombie, you kind of do. Um, I would say there are probably certain things you want to go back and watch, uh, depending on where you are in the game. Um, my Emperor Palpatine unlock is two days, is a two, two videos. Um, my CLS unlock, I believe, is across two videos. Um, so yeah, there are a couple things you might want to go and watch. The other things, maybe just look for videos that have a specific title that kind of talk about what I'm talking about. If it's just a normal day video, it, it might be a bo boring video, whereas I don't know what to talk about. and There's not much cohesion across the episode or video. Um, but thank you for finding me. Thank you for the support, and I hope you do enjoy the channel. Um, that's most of... What it was, um, I can also mention what I got to do last night, which was a lot of fun. Um, I bought tickets and um, went to see Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, with my father. Um, and after the movie, William Shatner comes out and talked and answered questions, told stories about the movie, about his life. And it was really cool. Um... The movie is like a two-hour runtime movie, maybe a bit longer. It felt like a long movie, but it also feels short. Um, then Shatner talked for like two hours straight, and I think he only got through like three uh, questions from the from the people there um, that were submitted. It was really cool getting to see him. Um, he's I think eighty-two, eighty-three, and it was a little strange. He's very obsessed with death. And he continually talked about his own death coming up soon. Um, that he knows is on the way at, at some point. Um, he's one of the last few surviving actors from the original series. If, if not the last one. Um, he, he knows that, you know, at some point it's going to happen. And... He talked about it so much. It was I don't think I've ever heard of someone talk about death so much. Um but a question the uh person who was there to help kind of guide the conversation, she would ask a question and he'd stand up from his chair and he'd start telling a story and it'd be a very strange story and you have no idea why this is related to the question. And he'd walk back and forth on the stage, the lighting department had such a they had to be on they had to be focused because when they were both sitting down on the chairs they dim the lights and only have a few lights focused on them but then he'd get up and start walking around and they'd have to mess with the lights and then he'd go back to the chair and they'd dim them and then he'd get up and walk around and they'd bring them back up again um 
and he'd tell this story, and then he would walk back to the person there with him. I don't remember her name. Um, and he'd go, what was the question? Why, why am I telling the story? And, and she'd bring up the question, uh, which could be about, you know, relationship with the cast or um, his experience for when he went to space. Um, and he'd go, oh, yes, yes, yes. And then he'd end the story he was telling to tra to transfer it over to a different story that it was supposed to lead into. And then he'd tell that second story that would ultimately, at some point, lead into his answer to this. It was so strange. And almost every answer, so he related somehow to death. Almost every answer. Um, and multiple times, he brought up how he doesn't like hearing that, you know, people grew up watching his shows. People grew up watching his movies. People grew up with being a fan of him. Um, it just reminds him of him, of him being old. Um, which I could understand. But I also think, you know, like, take pride. You know, like, take take pride in the fact that, you know, you are such a legendary actor. Take pride in that. You, you, you have been in so many good productions that people grew up and raised their kids being a fan of your work. But... It was really cool getting to see Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, which is such a legendary movie itself. If you haven't seen it, you should go see it. Um, getting to see that with my dad, who grew up watching the original series, grew up going to the movies with his whole family to see the Star Trek movies. Um, he had a whole story that he could tell, that my dad could tell me about the day they went to go see, his family went to go see Wrath of Khan, how it was a whole family event for it. Um, it, it was, now, my dad was much more a fan of Star Wars growing up and raised my, you know, me and my siblings being fans of Star Wars, but we always knew, you know, my dad loved Star Trek too. My dad grew up watching Star Trek. He and my mom and all their friends at college, every week, sit down in the, dorm common room or in a certain person's bedroom dorm room and watch the next generation like we knew like star trek was a generational thing and you know and it gets me thinking and comparing star trek to star wars and they really don't compare last summer actually like just before i was doing these videos i went through and i watched i wanted to watch all of the original series and like i wanted to watch every star trek product um that was released I ended up not doing that. It's a lot of stuff. Um, but I watched... I ended up finding a list of most important original series episodes to watch. And I did that uh, because it's a lot. and they're, They can be boring. You could get tired of it. Um, but also, like, a lot of important things happen. And, you know, it's, it's like it told, like, certain episodes um, to watch from each season of the original series that either set up things that happen in a later movie or in a later TV show... Um, or kind of really move the relationship between Kirk or between characters along. And so I, I watched all of those. And then I watched all the Star Trek movies. And I was very surprised. I don't, I had never really heard people talk about the original movie. Um, I just knew that it wasn't a big movie. And when I first, years ago, when I had talked to my parents about it, um, they said, just skip it. It's a boring movie. You won't enjoy it. But I sat down and watched it. And it was a really good movie. It was a really good movie. It was very... There was no action. I don't think there was any space battle. Um, it was... You could say boring. But it was really interesting. It was a very thought-provoking movie. It was a very relationship-driven movie. Um, it was really cool. Of course, Wrath of Khan. Um, they re um, t the first one... I'm rambling, but... The first one was released... The first Star Trek movie was brought was released because Star Wars had happened. And Star Wars was a space movie. People loved Star Wars. So they're like, well, we got to have a space movie too. So they released uh, Star Trek 1 and it did not compete. So then they had so then they sat back down and reconsidered what can they do. And they came up with an action-driven movie. And it did really well. You know, Wrath of Khan did pretty. Wrath of Khan did really well. It um, created a box office uh, record at the time, 
And so then they kept going with the movies. Um, but Wrath of Khan, they really wanted to compete with Star Wars. And they and I would say that one, you could say, competes with Star Wars. It's very... It, it doesn't in my mind. I mean, when I think of... It came out just after Return of the Jedi. When I think of Return of the Jedi, you think of the space battle over the moon of Endor. Um, with fast action... You know, X-Wings and TIE Fighters zooming past the screen, shooting at each other, blowing each other up t tens of hundreds of times over as you see it happening. Um, it's very exhilarating. And then the space battle in Wrath of Khan, um, I think there's, there's two space battles. But in the big one and the second one, I think each ship gets maybe six shots out at each other. And that's it. They're, they're flying very slow because they're damaged ships and... It's much more of an emotional battle than it is an action-packed battle, which I just think is funny that that was their competition um, to Star Wars. But it was a good. It's such a fun movie to watch, and just sitting there watching it on a big screen with a bunch of people, I just thought, man, the models, the you know, filming with models just looks so good. There's just something about filming with models that really can't. It's hard to compete with CGI against it. And our CGI looks really good now. And it's hard to compete with a model ship. Um, but if you're still sticking around this far, I'd love to hear your thoughts on on Star Trek versus Star Wars. Or, you know, and it's, you know stuff like that. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on all that. It's hard to put into words. And I know I... I kind of rambled just after, not really complaining, but talking about Shatner rambling. I just kind of rambled for a while, just talking about but my enjoyment of these kinds of things, of seeing the pr progress of technology within movies, um, the difference between Star Trek and Star Wars, because they don't compare. They're, they both have very different ideas in mind for what they want out of their stories. But we'll end it there. Um, I want to thank y'all all for supporting um, the channel, watching. I do, for those who stick around this long, I know y'all are re the real ones that uh, stick around for the tw Twitch streams as well. I will not be able to stream this uh, next upcoming battle for Grand Arena. I'm going to be out of town for the weekend. Um, and so, along with that, I won't also won't be able to record them as either. So I'll try and put some note, uh, messages into the Discord to let y'all know how it went. Um, if I'm remembering correctly... For this past battle, my main account won, my alt account won, uh, and this account had lost. Um, so that's what my record so far right now. I'm going to try and set it up to where I can make sure that I can remote into my PC and do the battles um, tonight or in the morning. But that's where we stand right now. Y'all have a great day, and may the Force be with you.